When uh, dermatologists see a patient with hypopigmentation disorders, it's also important to rule out any sort of hypochromia disorder at the same time. And here to explain why that distinction is important is Dr. James J. Nordlin of Boonshoft School of Medicine in Dayton, Ohio. If, if you don't distinguish those words, you tend to call everything the same process and you treat it the same way. If you have a white spot on your skin caused by a scar from whatever injury, and you treat it as though you've got loss of pigment, it obviously it's not going to be a successful treatment. So in order to emphasize to people, think about it, is this a color problem or a pigment problem? Is it something that you have to replace melanin or you have to fix a scar or at least deal with the scar? If you make that distinction, then you'll, you'll approach it therapeutically correctly and you'll be more successful. Progressive macular hypomelanosis is difficult to treat. Uh, I think the, the biggest problem is we have no idea why people get this. It's been suggested it's related to some infectious bacteria on the skin. I look for them, I try the treatments, but I just don't have much success. Um, I'm not sure I've ever had success, but maybe I've had it once or twice. So without that, that concept of a bacterial infection, we really don't have any other way of understanding this. So we try things like ultraviolet light. The problem is it doesn't work on the white skin, and, and it does work on the dark skin, so it makes it worse. So that kind of, we just have no other better understanding. We, we're, and we lack, therefore, good treatment approaches. Well, mycosis fungoides, of course, is a lymphoma of the skin, uh, as all dermatologists know. And it has serious implications for your, your health and even your survival. So you, won't, you don't really want to miss that, uh, nor, nor the disease sarcoidosis, which can resemble mycosis fungoides uh, very, very closely. You need to keep those in mind so that if, if you have that, the approach to work up to evaluation and to treatment is totally different. And the implications for your health and your life are very significant. I think one of the important things um, is the importance of skin color to people. There, um, we've been working on a lot of volunteerism in, in developing countries. And we made a list of the disorders that bothered people most who are living in these countries. So you would think about infections like scabies and impetigo, and indeed they're on the top list. But number four or five are pigment disorders. Whether this be too dark or too light, people really find these very difficult to deal with. They hate them. And so you, you go to very poor countries, Haiti, and the number of people coming in with vitiligo, progressive macular hypomelanosis, and so on, is very large because it, it's, it's such a stigma. So I think that's true also in the United States, and, and so people and physicians should be more interested, be, um, be more sympathetic towards patients with these sort of problems, and try to fix them as best they can. With Skin and Algae News Digital Network, this has been Damian McNamara in New Orleans at the American Academy of Dermatology Annual Meeting.